Hello everyone and welcome to the first lecture. The title of this talk is Ego, Essence and Personality. First of all, we will explain some terms that will be used in these classes. The first term is essence or consciousness. We are born with our own individual consciousness. This is an aspect of our psychology that can be seen clearly in babies and young children. A baby is conscious, tender, sweet and beautiful. In these classes, we call this aspect the essence or consciousness. Sometimes we also call it the conscience. The conscience is visible very clearly, or the consciousness is visible very clearly in the newborn baby. Here's an example. The consciousness is not the physical body. It shines through the eyes. This consciousness is also known as soul or buddhata, little soul, because it is in embryonic state at the moment. It's very small. However, the consciousness has innate qualities such as creativity, intelligence, perception, comprehension, initiative, intuition, etc. Anyone who has developed their consciousness can be known for great works of art or fine pieces of music or great scientific inventions because the essence or the consciousness is responsible for the perception that we might see in all aspects of nature. Anyone can develop this consciousness, this essence. Let's have a look now at what happens to the essence for us when we are born. This is the line of life here. Birth to death. When we are born, the essence is clearly visible as we saw in those photos and it can develop spontaneously or naturally by itself only for the first three or four years. After that time, the essence is only really seen sporadically. It's dominated, if you like, or subjugated by other aspects of our psychology which has developed. And in a typical life, we may not even perceive much of the essence at all, except in situations where we have a shock or we hear some very surprising news or we have a near miss or something like that. Then the essence is visible for that moment. Often when we have these shocks or this experience, or even pure joy even, we remember this, these events because everything that comes from the essence is memorable. Now we move on to the development of the personality. The personality is an energetic structure that starts developing in our psychology early on in childhood and can be said to be round, fixed round about the age of seven, but it continues developing and strengthening through life's experiences up until the age of 21 or so. And after then, we have that personality to use till the rest of our lives. Our personalities are developed in accordance with the life that we're born into, the society in which we're born into. We learn through the examples and experiences in our daily lives in the home, from our parents, from our siblings, we learn from school. We learn everything about how to react and interact in everyday society. The development of the personality is essential in order that we function and relate to the outside world, earn our living, know how to survive and so on. All the skills and talents that we need to learn how to survive and interact with people is from the personality. Here we have a picture of a young lad wearing a glasses and a large nose. He's already imitating his elders. In fact, the word personality comes from the Latin word persona, which means mask. Already the child is trying to imitate the life that he sees going on around him. Here is a personality from the 19th century. Already we can see this is very different to the personality we have in 21st century Ireland. The deportment is different the stance, the clothes. All of this is influenced by the era in which this man lived. The era in which we lived is very different to that. If we go back here now, we'll see again. 
We learn in a different way from our personalities. Our personalities develop in a different way, rather. Now let's look at the third aspect of our psychology, that which we call ego. The ego is a set of reactions that we have to events from the external world. It's similarly, it starts manifesting as the personality develops. You can see this very clearly in children. We know the terrible twos or the troublesome threes. Here's a picture of a girl, for example. Look at the expression on her face. She's either been told to do something that she doesn't want to do, her mother has asked her maybe not to do something, and so she's got a sulky face. And you can see this in the way she's holding her, her facial expression, the way she's closing her arms, undoubtedly she's got some strong emotions going on there, and surely she's thinking in those terms, I'm not doing that. What do you mean by telling me I have to do that? Or maybe she wants something that she can't have, and so she's in a sulk. Our egos are determined reactions to different circumstances of everyday life. They're habitual reactions. For example, if we're waiting in a queue for shopping and this person in front of us is taking a long time, we would have a reaction of impatience spring up. This, this egotistical reaction expresses itself through our personality according to the, the nature of our personality. Now you can see why the essence is so quiet because it's dominated by the ego using the personality. These two aspects of our psychology dominate the essence, which is quietly forgotten about. But yet, the essence is at the back, underneath, but it cannot express itself. The capacity for the essence to develop only lies in a limited form up until the age of three or four. If we want to develop the essence, something special must happen. We must provoke that development. It takes a conscious action from us to provoke the development of the essence. Here's an example of a strong ego in an adult. And as we said before, you can see the, the egotistical reaction in, in the actions. Here we go. Look at the expression of the face there and the fist. Also, you undoubtedly, he has some heavy emotions going on there, some heightened emotions and also some thoughts. He's undoubtedly saying, get out of my way, what do you think you're doing? Similarly with this example here, the lady is biting on the steering wheel. She's very impatient. She's angry, frustrated. Her, her emotions likewise will be heightened and she will have thoughts like, will I ever get home? Is this ever going to move? And so on. Egos, and we call them egos, plural, because they have different flavours to them. For example, the ego of anger is different to the ego of laziness or the ego of pride, for example. So in these classes, we call them egos, plural. And they have both positive and negative values. They are known in other cultures and traditions as psychic aggregates, selves, values, psychic adjuncts, or even mental crystallizations. Let's see some examples of how the ego expresses itself through the personality. Here's a typical ego. Poor me. Everyone is mean to me. That's an ego of self-pity right there. And it'll express itself in, through the personality according to the development of the personality. Here's another one. How clever I am. That's the ego of pride, of course. Here's another one. And these ones come fast and thick, different emotions, going from anger, frustration, disappointment, or happiness. Here's another one, smoke coming out of the ears. That one is anger, of course. Frustration. These are quite strong examples. We don't have to think that we'd have these strong examples ourselves in a continuous manner. But we have small reactions, smaller manifestations of the ego. Some egotistical reactions appear more often than others. Here's pride again. The essence can also use the personality. The essence has the potential to, be exp to express itself in that manner. But as we said before, the essence is dominated or subjugated by the ego, which uses the personality. 
The ego is always ready to strike. It's always ready to, to come out. For example, pride is always ready to show itself. Laziness is always ready to have a rest. Anger is looking for a fight. And so on. The essence, the spontaneous, original aspect of us, the consciousness, rarely gets to express itself through the personality because we haven't developed it. However, very importantly, we should know that it is possible to strengthen the essence and activate it once more. It is possible to access its innate qualities. And this is primarily what our classes are about. We focus on strengthening the essence as the first part of our work. We'll look at the ego later on. We call it the inner work. It requires patience, as the development of the essence is not a sudden occurrence. Have you ever seen a tree suddenly spring up all by itself? No, it grows little by little, in the right circumstances, in the right environment. This is exactly the same for the essence. We can develop it little by little if we give it the right environment, the right conditions. The development of the essence is only something we can do for ourselves by our own efforts through certain techniques. The correct environment for the development of the essence is to learn to live from moment to moment. So what are these techniques? Okay, so let's look at these techniques in more detail. Let's take a typical activity that we do every day, brushing the teeth, for example. So firstly, question what you are doing. Am I brushing my teeth or watching television? Question where you are. Am I in the kitchen or in the bathroom? You can ask other questions such as, is it day or is it night? Am I wearing my pyjamas or am I wearing my clothes? We put these questions to ourselves because it is the essence that checks and it starts to take notice of where it is and what it is that it's doing. Secondly, we're going to use two qualities of the essence to help us. These two qualities are action and perception of what it is that we're doing combined. Whatever it is we're doing, we're going to perceive that it is that we're doing that. The mind does not take part when we try and combine these qualities and put them into action. What does take part is the essence. These are the conditions in which the essence can develop, can grow. Let's explain more about what we mean. Here is a situation of a man who is walking. There's his action. He's walking along. But does he perceive what he's doing? Or is he thinking about something in the future? Or is he thinking about something in the past? Or does he have some great scheme on his mind? Or is he thinking about maybe a great day when he wins the lottery? Or does he have a relationship that he's thinking about? Or some other worries or questions? Generally, you find that this is the way we are through most of the activities that we do in the day. Even brushing the teeth, a simple activity. Do we just perceive that we're brushing our teeth? Or do we have these kind of thoughts going on? Have you ever found that maybe you read a paragraph in the newspaper or in a book and then had to read it again because you didn't notice what it was that you were reading? Often it's because the mind was distracting us with one of these myriad and many thoughts. The perception of what we're doing isn't aligned to the action of what we're doing. Our purpose now is to unite these two things, the perception of what we are doing and the action. These are two qualities of the essence, perception and action, or also known as will. When we do what we are doing, if the man here, for example, is walking and he perceives that he's walking, if he, for example, puts his attention in what he's doing, then the essence will start to develop. It will start to appear. Our task is to combine the action and perception of every task that we are doing during the day. And we can start off by just doing a few tasks in this manner each day, such as washing the dishes, making the tea, brushing our teeth, sweeping the floor, any examples like that. Use the senses to help you to anchor your point. So in the example, for example, when the man is walking, if he puts his attention in his feet, in the sense of touch, 
or in his hearing, or he puts his attention in the sense of sight to look what it is that's going on, but know that he is looking, then we maintain that notion of living in the moment. We start to learn to live from moment to moment because we are doing what we are doing. We're not thinking about other things. This is a retraining of the way that we live. So far, we've allowed the personality and the ego to dominate the way that we live. Now we're trying to bring back the essence into our lives. And we bring back the essence into our lives in just with just these types of exercises. We have to start small at first. So why are we doing this? This is how to activate and develop our essence. We are learning to behave more consciously in our daily life, learning to live from moment to moment. And in these conditions, the potential, the potential and all those qualities of the essence that we spoke about can develop. Bit by bit, we will see these qualities starting to appear. We will have access to them in our daily life. We will have more perception of what's going on around us. Our intelligence will show us how to resolve situations, how to confront difficult circumstances that we find ourselves in. These days, these strange days that we live in, more than ever, we need something strong in our psychology to help us to cope. That aspect of the strength, it doesn't come from the ego or the personality, it comes from the essence. This is the rock, this is the part of our psychology that we can rely on in difficult times. Now let's look at a practice. It is extremely useful to relax daily, to be present at least for some moments of each day. Try this relaxation practice. Choose a comfortable chair or lie down. It is best to do this practice when you know you're not going to be disturbed. It is also best to close the eyes and avoid any distractions. This practice is about 10 minutes long. I've included this practice as an, as an attachment to the, to the email that I've sent you, but we will also put it up on the YouTube channel so that you can access it there whenever you want. Once you are relaxed, then try listening to a piece of music. Keep your attention in your ears, in your hearing, without your mind distracting you. Simply listen. Put your attention in your ears and just listen. You can choose any music that you like, but I've got a suggestion here below if you're not sure which one to choose for a Pashabel Canon in D. Click on the YouTube link below. Now it's important to keep up regular practices during the week. Similarly, if we were going to try and get fit and we would go to the gym every day, surely, but slowly but surely, we would get fitter. It's exactly the same for the essence. If we practice every day, little by little, we do get our psychic fitness up. If we do it once a week, we'll get some benefit, but it will be lost pretty quickly. If we do small activities every day, then we can make progress. So here are some suggested activities. Walk, for example, and for five to ten minutes, keep your attention in your feet. Use the sense of touch to anchor you and don't let the mind distract you. Same with the music. Listen to music for five or ten minutes. Keep your attention in your hearing without the mind distracting you. Now put this practice into practice in several daily activities. Choose short, practical daily activities. For example, getting dressed or eating or showering. Learn to just do what you are doing without letting the mind distract you. This is a re-education of how we always live our lives. Trying to live more consciously, in other words. Now, let us know if you had any questions or, or have any feedback about all that you've heard tonight and the practices that you keep on doing. We will aim to keep in touch with you as much as possible so that we can guide and put the right things in place from week to week. Email us on info at htsk.ie. The next lecture will follow in about a week.